All right, uh, thank you for watching our video. Today we're going to install a uh, printed circuit board on the back of a small gauge cluster. Now we're kind of uh, trying to we're kind of trying to solve two issues here. Number one, we're going to show you a little trick on testing your gauges. Um, this this uh, console that we've got here, uh, all four of the major gauges work. The clock, uh, I don't know if the clock works or not, but we can check it real quick. I kind of don't think the clock works uh, really. Uh, don't care, but it's not not what we're trying to prove. And uh, I don't hear any zip. Yeah, so the clock's dead. So um, not a big deal. Not part of what we're trying to look for any either. What we've done, we've sold a we've sold a printed dash cluster circuit board, and it got uh, supposedly uh, folded in shipping. And then uh, the we've got a customer that says that the, the circuit board's bad and defective. Uh, when we looked at a picture of the circuit board, um, the clock wire was burned out on it. And so what we're going to try to do is to, uh, uh, I, I guess the, the customer is trying to say that the short on the clock was from the circuit board. There's really no way that's possible. Uh, about the only way you can short out the clock uh, 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 circuit would be to, to hit this uh, stud right here on something that was metal uh, when you were installing it in the car. Uh, I guess... Uh, if you shorted it out or if you shorted the ground out uh, uh, or hit positive to the side of the to the case if you hit positive to the side of the can uh, there's a good chance you're gonna you're gonna uh, short some stuff out but it really I don't see how it could short it out either I've got the circuit right here you can see the circuit that we've got um, so anyway the customer sent it back in this package uh, it's irrelevant as to who he is all we're trying to do is find out if the circuits bad if the circuits bad uh, then we'll send him another one for sure. Uh, but, and this pretty much looks the same as it did when it come in in the picture. Um, you can see the clock wire here is burned. And in most cases, that's where the clock got, is either shorted out or, or you had power hit this stud. Uh, like I said, we know all the gauges in this, uh, this housing are good. Uh, it's one of the housings we used uh, for testing. And uh, so... I think one of the other complaints was because of the fold in the uh, because of the fold in the uh, uh, circuit that the board wouldn't fit on the uh, gauge housing properly, and I'm really not having any issues with that right now, so that's a plus. It kind of sounds like we're being we're being uh, I don't know what you'd call it. It's just it kind of sounds like we're being uh, a little hard on this guy but you know I really don't think that the cluster or the circuit board is the problem I think we've sold about 1200 of these in the last year and uh, we've not had the first issue out of them and they're all pretty much made exactly the same so bear with me and I'll get these nuts on here and we'll fire this thing up and see what we got let's hope the bulbs are good when you tighten these down, you just want to tighten them down until they're snug. You can feel the nut bite in. Uh, as long as the nuts break in contact with the, or not breaking, making contact with the printed circuit board, you'll be fine. And let's keep going here. I'm on a roll now. A lot of, a lot of nuts. <laughs> just a lot of nuts. <laughs> Here. Now, if you look on this uh, printed circuit board, you don't put a nut right here. If you put a nut on that stud right there, that's uh, that's on your temperature gauge, and really, uh, you just don't want anything on there because this is your ohms wire going to your temperature gauge. And if that's your ohms wire and it cuts through, then that's going to ground it out. So you just leave that one blank. Which reminds me of doing the uh, tack video back when YouTube would only allow you to do a uh, YouTube at one time. I think you could only do a 10 minute video, so you had to do everything under 10 minutes. So you'd practice and practice and practice, <laughs> and then pray you got it under 10 minutes. Because when I did that, I didn't have any. When I did the, U the, the video for the uh, installing the tack board, 
I really didn't know how to edit this stinking thing, so I had no idea how to edit them, so I was just winging it from the get-go, and I don't, I'm not really so sure my editing skills are all that good anyway. It seems like when we do a straight-up video and just shoot it straight up to the internet, it looks a lot nicer than when we run it through the editing program. I think that's an empty socket there. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's empty socket. Uh, that would have been. Uh, let's see. No, let's see. Uh, low fuel. Low fuel warning is going to be right. Uh, this is backwards. This empty socket. This is seat belts. This is your low fuel warning. This is your generator light. So yeah, that's just an empty socket on this on this uh, board, and actually on most of them. I think that's a check engine soon light on the 80 to 82 cars. So if you if you want anybody wants to check me on that, they feel more than free to do so. How many more bulbs we got going on here, Kevin? I'm missing. Yeah, I'm missing two more. Three more. I can't get. Them. And it's not the circuit either. Oh, that's because that stupid clock is moving around on me. I'm trying to... Here, don't try this with the clock bolted. Just bolt it in. It's only got one bolt holding it. I guess we could have put a working clock in there, but it's not going to do a bit of good because the clock circuit's already shorted out. One more bulb. There we go. Okay. So I've got a cluster installed. I didn't have any issues. I think you could see that. There weren't any issues installing it. Uh, got a uh, nut missing though. I need one more nut. Thank you. That'd be embarrassing. Get it all back together. Nothing works. Yeah, because you left the nut off, dummy. Alright, so we're tight, tight, we're just giving them a little snug up, just to make sure we got them all good and tight. Good, 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 uh, good, hey, see it pull up just a little bit, there we go, tighten them too tight, you'll strip the nut or the studs out, usually it's not the nut that strips, it's the stud that strips out. So if you look, there's only one way to put the connector in. Uh, you can look at the uh, top. The top is real skinny. And the hole at the bottom is uh, a little fatter. That's the bottom. That's the top. You plug it up. Now in our test circuit, you'll see, well, let me plug the right one in. Let's try this one. All right. Anybody seen a test, test connector? Thank you. How do we end up with the third one? I don't need confusion in my life. All right, so now we're back to being plugged up. So if you look at this, we've twist tied these wires together. This is basically all your hot wires right here. So if you power this up, that puts power on everything. There's your three grounds right there. You got your three grounds right here. So if you power that these wires up right now, what should happen with power and ground and no ohms input signal? Uh, the fuel gauge should go to full. The old uh, temperature gauge should go to cool. The old pressure gauge should go to full pressure. And the amp gauge will deflect. It's going to deflect in the, in the amount of the draw uh, on the circuit, which shouldn't be too much, but you'll still see a deflection. Uh, so we're going to hook the power up. And when we hook the power up, and then oh, the light should come on as well. So hopefully we got good bulbs. I didn't check the bulbs beforehand. So, all right. Now we got any bulbs out? All right, that's a miracle in itself. Okay, so as you can see right here, this is your temperature gauge, and without a ground, you can move it over here. It's going to come back, and it's going to go right there. So it's a good way to test your gauges, you all. If anybody's watching this. Uh, uh, a temperature gauge with no ground goes to cold. If you ground out the temperature gauge, which I'm going to do, 
the gauge should peg full. So this is going to test the function of the gauge. It won't test the accuracy, but it will test the function. And so you can see right there that now you're full height. Full height is grounded out. So uh, if your ohm's wire is off, this is what it's going to do if your ohm's wire is off the temperature sender in, inside the engine compartment. And this is what it's going to do when you ground it out. So you just ground it out to the intake and you've tested the gauge. Now when you can do this outside the car, when you can do that and make the gauge do that, then you know the wiring is good, you know you've got power and ground to the gauge, uh, you've eliminated everything except for the sending unit. So at that point I would go to the sending unit and see what the problem is. Uh, there, it's a pretty basic circuit. Now the next circuit we're going to hit and uh, I'm going to guess that uh, pink is probably going to be the fuel gauge. In most cases it is, so let's get this far out of the way here and let's see what happens here. This is the fuel gauge. And you see it coming back? That's when you short it out. Okay, so your ohms wire, your tank just fell off. Gauge goes to full. Now, you just went back there and found it laying on the ground and you grounded it out to make sure the gauge was working and that's what you should get. If you can get this function out of the gauge, you've, you've eliminated the wiring, you've eliminated the dash unit, you've got power and ground to the gauge. You've either got a problem in your sending unit or you've got a problem in the wiring. Well, no, you eliminated the wiring by testing this. If you, di if you did this test at the back of the, at the tank, if you do this at the back of the tank, and I'm getting a little irritated because somebody of all times just decided to unload a truck about 15 feet from us. Um, but if you do this at the back of the tank, all you're doing is ver you're ver verifying everything uh, from the dash unit to the tank, and you're pretty much narrowing it down at the gas tank, either a ground problem or a, uh, or a, uh, a sending unit problem. And so then the next gauge we're going to do is we're going to do the oil pressure gauge. Uh, and I believe that's the oil pressure gauge. Whoops. What the hell did I do? Nothing. That was me just moving it. I thought I shorted something out. There we go. Oil pressure gauge. I, it's kind of hard for me to hold it, hold the, the, hold the, the, the housing. You look at the oil pressure gauge and the same deal. Uh, ohms wire is off the oil gauge, you've got power and ground, uh, and, and, and uh, you've got a full pegged oil pressure gauge. You ground it out, it goes to zero, problem solved. You know the problems at the sending unit and not at the dash. So, and then lastly, you'll see over here, if you look at the amp gauge and you watch it, it's deflecting. So we'll pull the ground off, see it go to zero. So we know we've got, there's a different way to test the amp gauge, but this is about the best one. Uh, so now back to our problem. Uh, I don't know what the customer's got or what he's doing wrong. Uh, I see nothing wrong with the with the uh, printed circuit. The printed circuit installed on the on the cluster perfectly. Uh, the only issue that I see is the burn in it, and quite frankly, the only way that burn can get there is if you've got a a, a shorted out clock, or b you've arced that stud against something doing the installation. Now, you don't have to have the key on to do that. That wire is 12 volts once you plug that up. Once you plug that connector in, that's 12 volts hot all the time. That is your clock wire. So, well, I hope somebody learned something out of this and hopefully it helps somebody with gauges. Uh, and thanks for checking out the video. If you get a chance, go to the website. It's wilcoxcorvette.com. There's two L's in Wilcox. Thank you.